In order to make the shirt that I want, I had a regular t-shirt that I liked how it fit. So I'm going to use that and hack my shirt to make the pattern for the shirt that I want. This is the material that I found at one of my local big fabric stores, thankfully. Um, this one and a matching black. So the shoulder and sleeves and the neckline are going to be the black. The body will be the roses. So for this pattern, we're using a t-shirt that I have. As you can see, I've already used this t-shirt in the past for my button placket um, video, which I will pop up on the right hand side uh, on the iCard section. Um, when I pulled this shirt out and I tried it on, I really liked how it fit. It wasn't too tight. It wasn't too loose. It fit me just right. But when you lay it out flat, you can tell it's not cut right. Because if you look right here, the side seam right here goes down here. And there's about three finger widths out this way. And if you feel on this side, the side seam is right here. The same about three finger widths hidden on the back. It's twisted. I can only assume because the manufacturer cut the fabric out with a warp to it. That's why the side seams are like that. So we'll lay out the shoulders like that. So right here is perfect. And so I'm just going to straighten out the bottom half, trying to get as much wrinkles out as possible. I know the seams are gonna twist and that's okay. So we'll just pretend that where the fold actually is, that those are our side seams. Okay, I think I've got it as wrinkle free and as much as I can get it to lay out flat as much as possible. So the shirt, if you look at pictures of the shirt, which I will pop up here on this side, if you look at pictures of what I want here, you will see at the arm, the lower half of the arm, right as the curve happen, you can either take it up and it comes up here to the neckline. So when you're cutting out the piece, you're taking the neckline, the shoulder, and the sleeve. And what's left behind is the front of the neck, or in the back, the back of the neck, and then the body piece of the fabric. Okay, so let's do it this way. L let me figure out where I want to have my neck cut. So do I want a really broad black part right here and smaller going into the flowers here or just narrow maybe about three fingers there and then mark it coming this way that looks like it would be okay I could always change it I could bring it down a little more but I could also also do it right here too but we're, do, we're trying to do the baseball look. So I'm going to do like three right there. That's it. I'm doing it right there. So now that I've marked right there, I'm going to take my ruler. Where's my ruler at? Here it is. I found my ruler. And I'm going to go from here to my armhole right here. So I'm going to keep the under part of my armhole where, where it curves. So right here where it starts to curve underneath, and I'm going to go from where it starts to curve up to that point where I marked on my neckline. Right here. So this will now become the front half of my shoulder. I'm going to actually pin this down so it doesn't shift on me. Because we're going to have to flip this over and do the same thing in the back because this is going to be one piece and then we'll have two pieces for for the front and back. All right, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip this. I got my marks here. Okay, do you guys see that? See my mark? So, I'm going to flip this and I'm going to figure out the same for the back. Well, you can kind of see the line there where but I'm going to do the same thing on the back. So on the back, am I going to do three fingers? We can match it up. It could be the same. I can kind of see where I marked here in the back. Some of the chalk had gone through the fabric. So I think I'm just going to follow up with that and do like three fingers, like right here. 
I'm gonna mark that. I'm gonna leave the bottom of the curve, and as the curve starts to move up, that's where I'm going to mark. So now that I have this marked, I'm gonna cut this out. But I'm not gonna cut it out and just one, just like chop it off. I'm gonna be careful how I cut this out. I'm gonna start here at the neckline. I'm gonna cut to the sleeve. I'm gonna stop right there at that seam. Bap. Come over here on this one. So now you just cut along the seam line here on the underneath of the arm. We're just following the seam line. That's going to be one circular piece and then I'm going to cut down the middle seam line because we want it to be flat. So this is going to be our shoulder piece. And you see the wrinkling here? We will get to that when we start to lay this on paper and trace it all out. We're going to make a paper pattern so that I have something permanent so that I can make more of these in different fabrics when I come across them. So I'm going to set that aside. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut straight up the middle, straight up the middle. So I'll cut through this and I'll cut through here. And then this side becomes my front piece and my back piece to trace on to paper. And this side just scraps or whatever. So just so I can make sure my, ac my measurements are accurate, here at the hem is 21 inches, 21 inches at hem, or just, just above hem. And then we're going to say about six inches from the hem, about right here. We're going to measure across. That's going to be 19 inches, 19 and a half, six inches above hem. And then at the armpits, right where we cut off underneath the arm. Measure that across, that's also 19 and a half. Okay, I'm writing those, I'm writing down those three measurements right here at the armpits, six inches above the hem, and then at the hem. That way I can make sure that my measurements are accurate as I'm tracing them. So we're gonna cut that starting here at the top. I'm gonna cut straight down the middle. Okay, so this side, half the shirt, I'm gonna set aside. I might be able to use that later in something. And this side is now the pattern piece for the rest of my body of my shirt. So I'm just gonna keep that there. This is gonna be just like it was cut, because originally when I made it, it was cut down the middle, so that's fine. And I'm gonna keep this just as it is. So I jumped the gun here. So we cut out the middle there. Now I need to cut down the side. And so when I, when I lay out my fabric, the seam should shift over here. So there we go. So now we have three pieces. We have our front here. We have our back here. And then we have our sleeve and our pattern here. So I'm gonna take these, set them aside, and bring out my tracing paper. So before I do anything, I'm gonna take my ruler. This is a square, and I use this to work most of my patterns off of, just because it's square, meaning I can have a horizontal and a vertical line that I can work off when I'm tracing patterns, and I don't have to worry about it being slightly off or crooked. So I'm going to just trace the inside, and those, these are the lines that I'm going to work off of in all my pattern drafting, or even tracing with this. And it's heavy duty, picked it up at, uh, where did I pick this up at? Picked it up at Harbor Freight for five, six, I would say eight to ten dollars. It's really heavy duty. It's, it's really heavy. It's, it's, a good, it's a good square to have. So now I've got my baselines here, which means all I have to do is lay out my fabric here, and then we'll pretty much trace around them. But before starting out, before doing our tracing, we need to think about a couple of things. Our hem here at the bottom, and our neckline here, 
and we need to think about seam allowances. This hem is an extra about half inch, three quarters of an inch here. So I am going to add a half inch to the bottom because that way the bottom line here will be where we fold it up to hem. Because this is a knit, it's not going to unravel and I don't have to worry about unraveling. All I have to do is like sew either a straight seam here or if you have a cover stitch like they had here, just do a cover stitch or however. So I'm going to do a half inch here at the bottom. So this becomes my hem and it's about a half inch. This becomes a fold because when I place the pattern piece on my fabric, it's going to cut out one piece with the fold right here. So we're going to go ahead and mark that. So this is going to be my fold line right here. Okay, fold line. And I'm going to place here. So as you can see, I'm not going to stretch the knit. I don't want the knit to stretch. I want it to stretch as little as possible. It's not going to be a perfect match because of the way I cut it out, but a little bit here and there isn't going to be a big deal with the knit because knit stretches. If this was a woven, I might be more inclined to be more particular about how I cut, but because I'm just hacking through this, I'm, I'm not that worried about it. If it's a little bigger on me, I, I don't personally care. So I've got my front line here. I've got my hem, including that hem. And I'm just going to lightly trace along the sides where my cut edge is. And right here, I did not cut off the seam allowance, so I'm going to trim off the seam allowance real quick. Because we want to have the seam lines. We'll be adding our own seam allowances. So I'd rather not have any type of extra seam allowances that would mess me up. Okay, and also the neckline is another one. That's a band right here. You can see the stitching right here. So if I go and cut right here on that line, that would give me an accurate neckline. So I'm gonna take this off. And then I'm gonna label this. This is gonna be my front. The It's called a raglan sleeve, so let's do that. Front, raglan, sleeve, shirt. It's gonna be a large, because that's what I am. And there's gonna be three pattern pieces. So I'm gonna say number one of three. So now all we have to do is true these lines. And truing these lines means straightening them out and making them look pretty so that they look nice as these lines right here. Okay, so we're gonna take our tape measure right now and set those aside. Take our tape measure, and remember the measurements we had here. So 21 inches at the hem, just above the seam. So, so that would be about a half inch up. That would be about 11 and a half, just over 11, that's 21. That's almost 22 inches, that'll be fine. Six inches above the hem. So about right here. And it's right there at the 10, so it's 20 inches. I'm a half inch bigger here. And let's see, underneath the arm, I'm at about 20 and a half inches here. Now, I'm okay with the extra, because remember, when I laid the fabric out, I stretched it out a little bit to get it to lay as flat as I could. And when doing that, did stretch it, and it gave me an extra half inch down my side seam. I'm okay with that. I'm still gonna add a seam allowance to it, just because I wanna be on the safe side, and I don't mind having an extra inch around my middle. I don't want this shirt too tight as it is, just cause of my belly. So I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this, and I'm okay with the neckline. Everything looks good to me. So I'm going to cut that out in a minute. 
while we're here, let's add our seam allowances. Thankfully, this ruler that I have has a blank space right here. That's a half inch. So I'm going to add a quarter inch here to my armhole. I'm going to add a quarter inch here to my neckline. And I'm going to put a half inch here on the side seams. Okay, so I got my half inch hem here, my half inch side seam, quarter inch seam allowance here for the shoulder, quarter inch seam allowance here for the neck. Now I'm going to cut this out, or I'm going to cut around it, and go on to my next one. kind of pokes right here we're just going to trim that out I'm going to take that and go right here just like that and make that flow a little bit so we don't have a point here I'm going to erase that point right there so you want it to be able to flow we don't want to come to a point and then continue on we want it to easily flow from the bottom of the arm seam into the shoulder Before we go on to our sleeve, I want to make sure that we compare our patterns to make sure that they'll match because once you cut the fabric out and if you have ones that's too long, that's too short, it just kind of messes everything up. So if you do it now here, then you don't have to worry about it. So what we're going to do, this is our center, so we're going to move this over this way. So we're going to match up our seam lines here. Now you can tell according to the shirt that we had, there was more shaping here on the front than here in the back. But the length from here all the way to here should be the same. Now that I'm done, this is what I did. Because I kept getting different measurements, no matter how I lined it up or how I measured it with my with my measuring tape, I kept getting different numbers. And that's not good when you sew. You need to have matching information on one side and on the other. And because this side curves in a little more, it's gonna be a little bit longer than this side and blah, 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 blah. So what I decided to do in order to get the side seams to match up from my seam line where my underarm, where my underarm would be, I just decided 16 inches to the bottom and then a half inch for a hem. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I was trying to split the difference between the two so I could still make sure everything was even, but I kept coming to about 16 inches anyways, 
give or take about half inch so so I'm just going to leave it at that 16 inches is my side seam both sides measure this and then I'm going to add an extra half inch and then from that half inch mark I measured I threw my ruler on here I didn't go straight across I went from where my half inch mark was here on the side and I went down to the very front of my to the center back or the center front of my body pattern. I didn't cut it straight across because then that would affect the front, how high or how low the front was, and I didn't want to change that. I just wanted to make sure the side seams matched. So then I drew a line and cut it out so that now I have 16 inches on my side seams plus a half inch hem going all the way across. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing with my sleeve that I did with my front and my back. We're going to trace it true it, cut it out, and then we're going to align the sleeve with the front and back of the other pattern pieces to make sure everything fits once again. We want to make sure our pattern pieces fit before we even cut out the fabric. So when I first cut this piece out, this, the shoulder was connected here and we had a, a lot of extra little space here. So I went ahead and cut the shoulder open to split it open like this. We're going to trace around it and I went ahead and I trimmed off any extra seam allowance here or up here. See, I got to do the neckline because I forgot to do that. All right, because this is a different shape than the center front and center back of my body pieces, I'm not going to use my square this time around. I'm just going to lightly trace around the sleeve. So when we're looking at this pattern piece, this is the front, this is the back. So I'm going to part. I'm going to mark front, back. And I'm also going to go back and trace everything so that it's all nice and neat. All right, so we have a half inch hem here. I'm going to add my seam allowances. I'm also going to erase all the squiggly marks. So a quarter seam allowance here, quarter seam allowance here, half inch seam allowance, half inch seam allowance, half inch hem. What we're going to do here on these lines, this is going to be folded up and then taped together. So let's get all this cut out. The only way we're going to be able to get the necklines to meet is to cut from this point all the way down to almost the end and then we'll move the pieces over so that they overlap and match. We'll tape them down and that'll correct the pattern. And I'm going to cut almost all the way to the end. So we left a little tag here at the end. We want to keep that as a pivot that'll allow us to move. We're going to line this up like that. See how we have a little bit here that's still a little wonky? So we're going to take that and we're just going to right here. So that's going to correct our, our neck edge. So we could curve it if we wanted to. Yeah, we could curve it a little bit. Just curve it a little bit but we just want to straighten that out. And then we retape it with our seam allowances added. Okay, there we go. There's our flat pattern piece for that. And now we're gonna compare it to our shirt pieces. Now that we got our sides done, let's see if we can get our, the shoulder seams here to match with these shoulder seams. So I'm gonna put my front to the side and I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm gonna measure this side and this side. And if they're the same length, I don't have to make any changes. If there are different lengths, we need to figure out where to make those changes at, where we're gonna take off or where we're gonna add on. <laughs> So the difference between 11 and a half, that was 11 and a quarter, 
and 11 and a half and one is not very big. It's only about a quarter of an inch. So I'm not gonna mess with it. There's just enough stretch in my fabric that I can stretch it to make the, to make the seams meet and I'm just gonna leave it as it is. So a quarter inch difference isn't that big of a difference and I'm gonna leave it alone. Now we need to do the front. Now there might be more problems on this one. This one looks a little shorter, but it's also a little deeper it's for the movement of your arm. So we're gonna measure this one and this one, just the seam lines. We're not including seam allowances. All right, so this one ended up being nine and two sixteenths. We are super close on this one and I am not gonna mess with it. So the sleeves were awesome. Those ended up matching really well or getting close to matching really well and I'm not gonna bother with anything else. The amount of difference between the two is so minuscule that I'm not even gonna mess with it. If it was bigger than an inch, maybe I would try to figure it out. If it was like the hem where I kept getting an inch and a half or anything like that, yes, I would definitely do that one. But the sleeves seem to be okay. So now we have our three pattern pieces. I'm going to go back and relabel everything. So in black Sharpie marker so I can see what I'm doing. And then we will lay out our fabric and put everything together. Bum 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 b